silver, I haven't any gold. I've no gifts to offer, no riches to bring. Two copper coins, that is all that I hold. What I have, I will give thee. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and blessings from the Lord to all on this beautiful day he has given to us. Welcome to worship. Thanks for taking the time and joining us today as we come together to this holy place and praise his holy name. If you are here in person today and this is your first time with us, we welcome you and we hope you find a safe place, a place of community, love, and hope in Jesus. To those who are connected online, welcome, and we hope you connect with us by commenting on the live feed or later on when you see the recording of this service. Tucker and United Methodist Church is a great church to know God, to grow in faith, and to serve the world. We connect and know God as we worship together. We grow in faith as we study scripture and join a small group, and we serve through local and global mission opportunities. We want to reach and build fruitful lives in Christ. So to learn more about our church, visit our website, TuckerTonUMC.org, and like our Facebook page so you can be up to date with the latest happenings of our community. So today we continue our worship series titled All In. 
And through this series, we are exploring what it means to be all in for God with all of our being and all that we have. And today's message is titled, No Strings Attached. So it is my prayer as we take 50 to 55 minutes to worship and listen to God's word that his Holy Spirit continues to transform our lives. We also celebrate communion every Sunday and we invite you to participate. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table meaning everyone can partake communion. For all who are connected online, we also invite you to partake communion with us. Have ready a piece of bread or cracker and a cup of juice or water. So let's prepare our hearts as we do together the call to worship. God of grace. Jesus of mercy. Spirit of hope. Show us how to be generous with our gifts, with no strings attached. Loving God, we worship you with grateful hearts, for you have given us your Son, and through the power of your Holy Spirit, have given us the gift of community. It brings us such happiness when we gather and work together in love as one body in Christ. Show us how to share this joy with our neighbors so that those who do not know you may see your love through how we live. May we be a blessing to those around us, holding nothing back, asking for nothing in return, just as you have blessed us. Grant us this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture reading for today, we find it in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 43 to verse 47. This is what the scripture says for us today. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believe were together 
and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So last year was a very, very difficult year for many. In the midst of a raging pandemic, we saw how people and communities came together to bless one another. We have the example of Dina and Mike Iovine. They decided to bless the community with free meals and develop a food pantry in the restaurant they own at the time. We saw many from this congregation and others decide to sue masks for healthcare workers and first responders. We saw people given to the church for Hispanic families in need and other ministries. In the midst of a difficult time, we saw many give with no strings attached. Give out of love to be a blessing to the wider community. So we all have a sense of what makes a community welcoming. And what a difference a welcoming community can make. And hopefully, most of us have experienced this welcome firsthand. So what makes a community welcoming? Maybe it is when people go above and beyond. When people are genuine. When the generosity of others draw us in and invites us to learn about Christ and faith. That is what we saw last year. People going above and beyond. People being extravagantly generous to others. Being welcome and welcoming others. Giving hospitality and receiving it. Having a generous heart. All that is important and at the very heart of a Christian community. Now, sadly, some of us may know what a welcoming community is because we have experienced its opposite. And in today's scripture, we get a picture of the earliest Christian community and the way it blessed the broader community. Some of us have been accustomed to thinking of our churches as places we go to get our fill on religion, spirituality, or inspiration. Similarly to the way we go to the grocery store for food or the cinema for entertainment. We see our involvement and offerings to the church as a way to keep it up and running. You see, open for business. And as long as the customers, in this case members, are happy, that is what matters. Now in part, this is a byproduct of the way our society works. But the picture of the earliest church in Acts is radically different from that. The people's faith was not a small part of their lives. They were all in. And this is clear in the way they devoted themselves to the church community, to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking the bread, to doing prayers, living together, Sharing what they had and providing for everyone's need. This doesn't mean that people stopped working or having personal lives. They were all in for God, which meant God was in everything they did. And verse 46 says, they didn't just worship in the temple. People praise God at home. And in fellowship through meals shared together. Because of the way the Christians live their faith. People in the community witness the power of the spirit working through them. They were a blessing to 
the wider community. And the passage says they had the goodwill of all the people. So the church was not just tolerated or respected in the community. It was well liked to the extent that people were drawn to become part of it. Day by day, the Lord added to the number those who were being saved. Now, this undoubtedly had to do with the way the people of the church used their gifts to help bring others to faith. And we get a picture of a community that finds joy in generosity. Reverend Adam Hamilton in his book, The Walk, shares a little bit about the joy in generosity. He says that when we are generous, we find joy. And just as we were made to practice generosity together in community, God also means for it to be part of the daily rhythm of our lives. He mentions a famous quote from Winston Churches who said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Jesus thought the same thing, but said in it this way, give and it will be given to you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. So what did Jesus mean by that? Jesus meant that there is something about giving that blesses the giver. It brings you joy and gives you a sense of fulfillment and meaning. A multitude of scientific studies have reached this same conclusion. Giving actually blesses the giver. Through the ability to study how different centers in the brain respond to various stimuli, scientists can actually observe how this dynamic occurs. They have observed from brain scans that when people give, it lights up the brain's reward center. That make us feel happy. And at the same time, giving diminishes the amount of activity in the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that produces feelings of worry and anxiety. So giving reduces stress and increases the sense of well-being, thereby increasing health and longevity. It even lowers our blood pressure. The blessings of giving span the gamut from health to meaning to fulfillment to joy. And in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, we see God's people that are called to be present in and to their community. To focus not only on their own sustainability, but on serving others. We serve a God who went all in, not just for us, but for the whole world. And we are called to do the same. We were created in the image of God. And God is generous. And generosity is seen most clearly on the cross where the selflessness and love of God were poured out for all humankind. Because we were created in the image of a generous God. We were created for generosity to be the regular rhythm of our lives. When we are generous, we walk closely with God. Our generosity touches the heart of God and we become what God made us to be. So what does it mean for this congregation? To have goodwill for all people. How often the generosity of the church seems like it has strings attached. So in our generosity, are we considering the goodwill of all people or thinking of ourselves? The church is not a building or a place. The church is fellowship. It's people doing life together. The 12th century 
In the 12th century, an English monk named Alred called doing life together spiritual friendship. We spend time with each other. We care for each other. We are willing to sacrifice for each other. Give generously to each other. We share common life all in response to Jesus doing those things for us. And in Acts chapter 2, we see a community of faith that operates in the power of God's spirit with no strings attached. A community that serves the Lord and blesses people. A community that lives their lives reflecting the love of God. Drawing people towards the community of faith. Because people are longing for meaningful friendship. People are longing for a community to call their own. They are longing for family. And our church can be that place for them. If we elevate the needs of others above our own. If we join together and pursue one mission together. If we remain unified in that purpose, we can be the family that some people never had. God created for us community with him at the center. So the earlier Christians in Acts were all in. So what steps do we need to take to be all in? You see, going all in involves taking risk, and putting aside what we know and are used to. It means to reimagine and change. It means to identify the needs of others and bless people in their needs. Because our lives are communal and individual. And we ought to reflect our own experiences of God's grace and action in and among us. So we see in Acts a community that was generous to each other. They took care of each other. And God blesses us so we can be a blessing to others. The church is the mechanism by which the blessing of God goes out into the world. So be generous with people. So what's the rhythm of your life? When it comes to generosity, do you have strings attached? Are you stinging with your tips in restaurants? Do you try to get people down to the absolute rock bottom when negotiating a purchase? Or do you find a fair price for both the seller and you? Do you pay it forward? Do you pay somebody lunch? Dinner, breakfast. Marianne Riley was sharing the other days on Facebook how people were paying it forward when she was having lunch after church. Breakfast. Thank you. Are you doing the same? Giving generously? Helping others? Praying to God to see who is in need and if you can bless them? Do you resent being asked for money either by the church or by others? Or do you look forward to being asked and having the opportunity to give? So maybe to get in the rhythm of being no strings attached and being generous, maybe you might tip a server more amount than the normal that you give. Maybe give an anonymous gift to someone in need. Might be a donation to a cause that matters to you. Whatever it is, pray to God and cultivate generosity. And there is also a corporate component to our giving. We give to the church and its ministry to bless people. Now, you have heard me over and over say that we 
give to bless the local community through the local ministries of the church, but we also give to bless the world. You know, our church and its budget has over $33,000. That's what we call the fair share apportionment. Sometimes churches don't like that name. That is our apportionment to the United Methodist Church and to our annual conference, Greater New Jersey. And that money goes to bless people, not only in New Jersey through the ministries of the annual conference, but that money goes to UMCOR and goes to religion and race and goes to other ministries of the United Methodist Church. And that spreads throughout the world. Did you know that your offering, when you give a dollar every Sunday or your tithe or if you go to push pay, whatever method you use, of our budget, $33,000 go to bless ministries in New Jersey and the world. So you're probably offering not only to bless the ministry here, but you're blessing the United Methodist Church serving in the U.S., in the world, in Africa, in Asia. You're blessing everyone. And sometimes we say, like, maybe that money should stay locally. But I see it as a pastor that we're taking part of our offerings and giving it to greater New Jersey so we can help small churches and pastors and giving it to the United Methodist Church to bless those churches that are rebuilding, churches that are now starting, pastors and missionaries all over the world who are preaching the gospel of Jesus. So we cultivate generosity not only to serve locally here in Tuckerton, but also remember that every time you bless the ministry of the church, you are blessing also the ministry of the church in the world. So that's why we say there's a corporate component to our giving. Your giving is like a selfie that provides a portrait of the true you. So when you cultivate generosity in the process, you will come to see yourself differently over time. Because the habit of giving changes us. Gifts given by the Spirit are to bless the wider community. So use your gifts and talents to bless other people. Serve the community. Help others. Have a generous heart. Jesus said, more blessed to give than to receive. I want to end this message with a story that sums up everything I have talked today. And probably you read about it. It was a meditation on, of our daily bread for October 22nd. And this is what the story says. After 10-year-old Chelsea received an elaborate art set, she discovered that God used art to help her feel better with, and she was sad. When she found out that some kids didn't have art supplies readily available, she wanted to help them. So when it was time for her birthday party, she asked for her friends not to bring her gifts. Instead, she invited them to donate art supplies and help fill boxes for children in need. Later, with her family's help, she started Chelsea's charity. She began asking more people to help her fill boxes so she could help more kids. She has even taught art tips to groups who have received her boxes. And after a local newscaster interviewed Chelsea, people started donating supplies from all over the country. As Chelsea's charity continues sending art supplies internationally, 
this young girl is demonstrating how God can use us when we're willing to live to serve others. Chelsea's companion and willingness to share reflects the heart of a faithful steward. The Apostle Peter encourages all believers in Jesus to be faithful stewards as they love each other deeply by sharing the resources and talent God has given them. Our small acts of love can inspire others to join us in giving. God can even rally supporters to serve alongside us. As we rely on him, we can live to serve and give him the glory he deserves. And I add to that story, we serve with no strings attached. Amen? Amen. Let us affirm our faith together by doing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This week we receive the following prayer requests. Please remember in your daily prayers all those we mention, those we hold in our hearts, and those who pray for them. We pray for Debbie Martirano and her family. We pray for Lenny Barn. We pray for Steve Ski. We pray for Don Wilton, for Carrie Raffius, and the Grunau family. So let's have a word of prayer. Blessed are you, God, over us. For each autumn morning, you bring us a breakfast tray brimming with glories. Green leaves veined with bronze and gold. Wave their quiet hellos using blue heaven as a pristine backdrop. In this season, you command our attention from the crunch of twigs underfoot to the bracing breeze that stings the spine, you speak to us. Forgive us, we pray, when we squander your offerings. Favors from your heart that tell us we are beloved. As the earth turns according to your divine will, turn our souls in your direction. And may we be poised to discern your wooing from every stone and bit of stubble in the field. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, God, beside us, for your step in tandem with ours. In these erratic times, however, we confess that we often feel insecure, ungrounded, and alone. We remember your son was also clothed in humanity, that he experienced those dark nights of the soul, enduring so much more than we. And yes, we believe, Lord, that the resurrected Christ is our hope and our redeemer. Yes, we believe. Yet we need you to shore up our belief. When our dreams fade, our bodies let us down. When our loved ones pass on, when friends forget us. When society is increasingly splintered, steady our steps, we pray. Guide us toward that place of peace within yourself. And there may be rest, and we rest a while until we are strong enough to walk along with you again. Down the unwavering path of faith. Blessed are you, God, around us. For Jesus said, he hath flocks of which we are not aware. And that truth alone reveals the immense breadth of your benevolence. 
is underscore the fact that neither this world nor this universe is the property of one nation or people, no matter how powerful. My thoughts flocks include those we pass every day yet do not see. Do they live in communities which we are afraid to visit? Are they the throngs who exist behind bars, hemmed by hopelessness? Could they be those who are yet to be born? You are the God of no boundaries, whose plan encircles all time and space, and whose mercies are immutable. So our questions, Lord, are many, and answers elude us. Nevertheless, May we live secure in the knowledge that those whom you love were also called to love and to serve. And by your grace, might we grow in respect and friendship with all until that day when all flocks shall be gathered with you in your all encompassing community. Lord, we pray. We pray for the praises and petitions from our church family. We pray for those who need you today. We pray knowing that you always are ready to listen to your children. And we sense your working among us and trust in your sustaining mercy. So we pray, Lord, for those in need, for those who need your healing mercies. We pray for those who need your protection. We pray for those who serve, men and women in the military, law enforcement officers, first responders. Blessed are you, O oh God, with us. In this season of splendor, we witness nature taking on its own work of pruning and nourishing the earth. Still, it is a time to plant that which will burst forth when spring arrives. Along with the tulip bulb, may we bury thoughtfulness and kindness, that they might spread their roots far and wide underneath the raven earth. May we bury generosity, that it might permeate the soil along with the winter rain. And may we sow seeds of peace, that they will multiply, becoming extensions of your holy peace. And when warm winds blow again, may all flourish, bringing honor to the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we believe that all are welcome at the Lord's table. Those who seek to live a new life in God's grace are invited to share the bread and cup. So we lift up our hearts and we give thanks to God because it is right and a good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to God. God who call us to be his people. Who sent his son Jesus. That same Jesus shared a final meal with his disciples, calling one and all to remember and reflect when we eat of the bread and partake of the cup. Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Drink from this, all of you. This is my life pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
It's a simple experience that we repeat about a powerful love we share. And we do this in remembrance of him. So let's move into this holy time together. Let's receive our gift of love and belonging together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here in our homes that we may answer your call and be your people. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts at our table today. And we ask that you bless our gifts, that they may nourish and strengthen us to have generous hearts. May we be strengthened through your Holy Spirit to be the body of Christ, your servant people, faithful in all things and humble in our service to you and your people. God, help us experience your love every day and share that love with others. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ broken for you. This is the bread of life strengthening you to answer Christ's call. The blood of Christ shed for you. This is the living water blessing you to live in faith and grace. So we now prepare our hearts to partake communion. We invite first our praise team to come forward. And then all are invited uh, from the back of the sanctuary all the way forward. Uh, those who are online, you can also share communion at this time with the gifts you have at your homes. And after you partake, we invite you for a time of prayer as we together participate here in the sanctuary. Given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. This cornerstone, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I all in all, here in the love, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. To save the The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ gave for you the blood of Christ shed. The body of Christ gave for you the blood of Christ shed. Light of the world, my darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. The body of Christ gave for you the blood of Christ shed.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table. By granting us the presence of Jesus Christ, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So a couple of announcements uh, that I want to share with you uh, this, for this week. This Tuesday, we continue our Bible study, 9 a.m. in person, 6.30 on Zoom. And November, there's going to be changes in the dates uh, for the Bible study. So November dates are going to be November 9th and November 16th. You will receive an email later on reminding you of those changes. And this Saturday, uh, our district will celebrate uh, the local churches charge conference. This year, we are all moving to the United Methodist Church of Absecon, and we're going to celebrate our charge conference there. So our charge conference is scheduled for 9 a.m. They're asking for people to be there 15 minutes before uh, 9 a.m. to put us in a room so we can have our charge conference. Masks are required inside of the United Methodist Church of Absecon. And at 10 a.m. after the charge conference, there's going to be a small worship service of all the churches together. So we need from you, if you are going to participate and going with us to Absecon on Saturday, that you let Ann Thompson know, our recording secretary. Uh, she's back singing, amen. Uh, so please let her know today that you are are going to go to Epsecon for the charge conference. We need to do a head count of how many people we have, okay? Uh, leadership is expected to participate in the charge conference, uh, but it's in also open to all members of our congregation. And we will meet here at 8 a.m. so we can do carpool and go together uh, to Epsecon, okay? So that's going to be uh, at 8 a.m. next Saturday. And we have a prayer show. I'm reminded that shows made for centuries universal and embracing symbolic of an inclusive, unconditionally loving God. They wrap and fold, comfort, cover, give, solace, mother hug, shelter, and beautify. Those who have received shows have been uplifted, affirmed, as if given wings to fly above their troubles. Compassion and the love of knitting and crocheting have been combined into a powerful prayer ministry and a spiritual practice which reaches out to those in need of comfort and solace as well as in celebration and joy. Many blessings are prayed into every stitch and this show was made specifically for Sue Hastley. So let us pray. May you feel surrounded by love and safe harbor. May you be mindful of the presence of the prayers of your church family that are woven through each fiber of yarn. May this garment proclaim peace, peace over you, peace under you, and peace within you, and peace around you. May the shawl remind you that love is needed into our fabric by God's grace, freely given for his own sake. May this garment be received as a vessel that has been filled with healing intentions and comfort, a garment that seeks to console and solace, a garment that celebrates and affirms, a garment that showers abundant blessings upon its wearer from the compassionate heart of his knitter. May you receive peace that you may be peace, receive love that you may be love, receive healing that you may heal, and receive affirmation that you may affirm. Be prayerful, and when you wrap yourself in your soul, may you be mindful that you wrap the prayers of others around your shoulders and across your chest, and do not doubt the power of prayer that is present in your soul. So this shawl has been presented to Sue Hazley by the Joy Group and was blessed today, October 24, 2021. Amen. Any other 
our announcements before Marianne Riley, yes? Yes, we had a great uh, community yard sale yesterday and in November. We also gonna have a vendor fair coming up. Marianne. Any other announcements before? All right, so let's uh, have our praise team lead us in a worship song. Yeah. 
So God has given us the gift of extraordinary love so that we can bless the wider community. And with our gifts, we give our whole selves for greater impact, greater faith, greater joy and generosity with no strings attached. You can bless the ministry of Tucker United Methodist Church today by giving in person or online at tuckerdenumc.org slash give. And you can also give through the Tucker and UMC app on your smartphone. So let us pray and give thanks for the offerings received this week. Loving God, as you sent Christ that the world through him might be saved, receive these offerings that they might be used to bring blessing to our community and to the great human family. May our generosity be a gift that helps to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Hear our prayer in the name of the one who gave his life that we all might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. So let us all stand up and sing together the doxology. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope God blesses you this week. And now from the one who is indeed the giver of all gifts, go and share what God has given you. Go and proclaim that God's love is here. And go in the power of God's spirit to make all things new. Remember, you might be the only Jesus, a friend, neighbor, someone might ever meet. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and the people of God say Amen, Amen. Christ be your